Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I have a really important problem to look at and it deals with impedance matching. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the simplest possible case of impedance matching and that's a DC case where I only have real resistors. I'm not going to put any capacitors or inductors in there just yet because you can illustrate the concept of impedance matching with this simple case. And this is what I have. I have a power supply here, just a regular old battery that produces an EMF a constant EMF, the battery itself has to have some internal resistance and I'm denoting that by the lowercase r value and then I'm going to connect that to a load. Okay, and that load is going to have some resistance which is going to be given by the letter uh, uppercase r. And the question is very, very simple. I can plug in anything I want into this power supply. And the question is what value of the resistance gives the maximum power dissipated by that resistance? So we're gonna start off by just looking at this general term. We're gonna write down a loop rule, Kirchhoff's loop rule for this problem, and look at the power equation that we get that's getting dissipated by this resistance. It might not be what you think it is. And the other important thing at the end is we're gonna try some numerical values. I'll give you some examples here just to have a look at what we just covered. All right, so let's get started. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Just takes a second and consider subscribing to my channel. We do a lot of great stuff here. So I've got a real battery. A real battery consists of an ideal battery with an internal resistance that is in series with it. And now I, I wanna ask the question. Well, I wanna connect this battery now to some other resistance. And I wanna know for which value of this resistance am I going to get the maximum amount of power? and the power dissipated by this resistance. So remember the power being dissipated by any resistance, in this case I'm interested in this uppercase R, is simply going to be the value of the resistance multiplied by the current squared. Now there's actually two terms here. To find the maximum power being dissipated, well, it depends not only on the value of the resistance, but it depends on the current. So you can't just say you wanna maximize the current. Okay, because this value of the current here uh, also depends on the value R. So let's start maybe by eliminating the value of the current. Very easy to find for this particular circuit because we only have two resistors. So again, if you do a loop around here starting at point B, uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule gives us E minus the voltage drop across the internal resistance minus the voltage drop across the resistance that's plugged in over here to the battery, I do a complete loop, that has to be equal to zero. Again, at the end, you get that the current flowing in the circuit simply looks like this. All right, so now let's go ahead and substitute this in the expression up here. So we get R, R plus uppercase R, and don't forget to square this guy. Now let me just group the terms together, maybe carry out the square. So the first term here is a term that involves only the resistance values. This guy here is R plus R, and I have to square it, and everything here gets multiplied by the EMF squared. All right, so there is our value for the power. Now the question is, which value of R will maximize this? Well, let's do some test cases. What happens if so let's do case one. What if R equals to zero? What if there is no resistance? What power do I get here? Well, if you substitute big R equals to zero, look what you get. You get zero up here, and you get divided by R squared, so that'll be fine. So at the end, you're gonna get that the power dissipated by that resistance R is actually zero. <laughs> so <laughs> that doesn't look like a maximum value to me. Um, let's try another value. What happens if I make this resistance very, very big? What if I make R ten toward something very, very big, ten toward infinity? What would you get? Well, now you have to take a limit here because look at the term at the bottom. The term at the bottom, forget about little r if big R is very, very big. Right? The dominant term here will be the, the uppercase value of the resistance here. And what you're going to get here is going to be 1 divided by R. Okay. So let's maybe carry that out. And in that case, if you divide now by something that's very, very big, so the term at the bottom is always going to be bigger. And then again, that means that in this limit over here, 
the power being dissipated by the resistance is again is going to be zero in the limit that r equals to infinity or tends toward infinity. So it must mean that there is some value in between zero and infinity where we're actually going to get some maximum value. Right? You could try any other value and you're going to get a positive number, which means that if I substitute r equals to zero here, and let's just say oh, up here is basically infinity, there's got to be some point here in between where we're going to get some maximum value of the power. Here I'm plotting power being dissipated by that resistance versus the value of the resistance. These were the two cases here illustrated by both of these red points. All right, so now let's try to find what is this actual value of R. In order to do this, I'm going to do a little bit of calculus, but what is this value of R here? Where do you get that maximum power? So again, if you remember from calculus, while well, we have an expression here, what we want to do now to find the maximum is we're going to differentiate with respect to R. Okay, and in order to differentiate this function here, you know, actually what I will do first is, let me be a little bit careful here. Let me first rewrite it and then I'll take the derivative. Okay, so let's write it down over here. And I'm just going to write it in a nice, easier form to take the derivative because I'm going to use the uh, product rule for the derivative. So I'm going to write the function as r. I'm going to bring this term at the top. And if I do that, I just have to switch the exponent, minus 2. Then all of that gets multiplied by a constant here, which is the EMF of the battery. All right, now let's take the derivative of this function here with respect to r. And what we want to do to find the maximum value, we want to set that derivative equals to zero. Okay, so we have two functions. We don't have to worry about this term over here. Let's just leave it outside. That's just a constant term. It's not a function of r. So we'll take the derivative of the first term. That's simply one. So that gets multiplied by the second term. So right away, I'm simply going to write it in the denominator. Save a step. Okay. Now... I, multi I have to take the derivative of the second term and leave the first term the way it is. So that looks like minus 2r. And this term here in the bracket, the exponent here has to be reduced by 1. So that becomes r plus r to the raised to the power of 3. So make sure you kind of understand this step here. That's kind of a critical step. Now we have two different fractions over here, but they're on different... They have a different denominator, so in order to simplify this, what we're going to do is going to put things on a common denominator. I'm going to leave this constant term there, although I could have just gotten rid of it, I guess. All right, and the denominator here that I'm going to use is r plus r raised to the third power. So that means that this term here remains unchanged. That's minus 2r. And this first term here, you simply have to add r plus r in order to make it equal. Okay, now if we want to set everything equal to zero, well, now you can factor out or you can simplify some of the terms, rather. You can get rid of this. You can get rid of the bottom term. And here that you can simplify this, right? This is r plus r minus 2r must be equal to zero. So that means that the r minus r must be equal to zero. And at the end, the last result we get is that the resistance is simply equal to the internal resistance of the battery. That is the value that is going to give us a maximum. So let's clear that up a little bit. That means when R here equals to the internal resistance, you're going to get a maximum power. We finish off here by looking at a numerical uh, example. I have a nine volt battery with an internal resistance of 0.15 ohms. And I'm gonna consider three cases here for the load resistance, uh, 0.1 ohms, 0.15 ohms, and a one ohm resistor. So for each of these cases, let's have a look at how much power is being dissipated by this load, by this resistor. Okay, so let's do the first one. Uh, the first one here has a resistance of 0.1. That means that the current uh, the current would be the EMF 
divided by the total resistance. These are in series, so that's simply R plus uppercase R. Uh, we should get a current. In this case, it's pretty big, uh, 36 amperes. And now you calculate that. You put that into the power equation, or you could just immediately write it into our equation over here. Uh, you put that current in there, and what you end up getting here uh, should be 0 0.1 multiplied by 36. And we have to square that value. So for the red case here, the power being dissipated, in this case, I get a value of 129.6, and that should be in standard units in watts. All right, let's do the next case. Uh, the next case over here, again, you can either use the current, find the current first, then substitute it, or just use our power equation here. It really doesn't matter which one you use. All right, so in this case here, we get, again, our EMF, which was 9, divided by the total resistance, which in this case is going to be 0 0.15 plus 0 0.15. They have the same value, All right? This is the case of impedance matching. Uh, we get a current in this case. The current's actually a little bit less because the total resistance is a little bit bigger. But you substitute that now into the power equation and the power dissipated by this 0.15 ohm resistor, in this specific case, equals to 135 watts. All right, and our last case here is the bigger resistance, right? In this case here, the value of the current should be the smallest, right? The value of the current in this case would be 9 and divided by the total resistance, which is 0 0.15 plus 1. Uh, if you substitute that, you should get 7.83 amperes. And now the power dissipated for this 1 ohm resistor, uh, pretty straightforward, just 1 multiplied by 7.83 and just square that term. And in this case, what you get is much smaller value, 61.3 watts. That's the power being dissipated in the 1 ohm resistor. So you see at the end of the day, our maximum power here was obtained when, well, the maximum power was 135 watts, and that was obtained when our load resistance R was equal to the internal resistance, right? When you have some matching between the left-hand side of the circuit and the right-hand side of the circuit, right? When the resistance or the impedance is matched, we get maximum power dissipated. All right, folks, that's it for me. Uh, leave a question if you don't understand anything. Thanks for watching.